Hey, Ole Miss fans, welcome back to another video. And this week, Ole Miss does take on Georgia Southern this Saturday at 6.45 Central Time, 7.45 Eastern Time. Game will be on the SEC Network. You know, Ole Miss is uh, all to a very good start. We are 3-0 on the season. And then Ole Miss does play Georgia Southern this weekend. Georgia Southern 2-1 on the season. Uh, they do have a loss against Boise State. But they have a couple wins as well, too, um, the last couple weeks. Um, but today we are joined by Kenny, and uh, Kenny, I want you to talk about uh, how you can, uh, how people can find you on X, and also talk about your YouTube channel as well too. Uh, but today's Kenny is going to talk more about uh, Georgia Southern ENT's video. So Kenny, go ahead and promote your channels right quick. Yeah, man, let's get into it. Uh, my name is Kenny, also known as VF Baller. Uh, the, you know, basically the Twitter handle is the same VF Baller. I am the host of the First and Frame Rate Show. Mostly talk about Georgia Southern Atlanta Falcons football. And like I said, I, I really appreciate you having me on here. If you want to find me on YouTube, just type in first and frame rates. So you'll find it right there. It should pop right on up. Over there, I talk about, like I said, mostly Georgia Southern Atlanta Falcons football and uh, everything under the umbrella when it comes to the Sun Belt or the, you know, SC, I mean, sorry, um, NFC South and uh, everything, you know, pertaining to that. So I'm glad that you have me on, Trent. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate you joining. Means a lot for sure. So, um, so yeah, let's let's just kind of dive right into it. So, uh, Georgia State, you know, they. Uh, I'll tell you what. Let's start with the offense first. So first, I want to tell you something before you start it. You know, that's one okay. of the cardinal rules that people get mixed up all the time. They confuse us with Georgia State. We hate that team. Yeah, yeah, Georgia Southern, Georgia, right? Southern, Georgia State. Southern, Southern, not State. Hashtag Southern Not State. And we'll be talking about them the following week because we play them. So, yeah, we do not like to be called Georgia State. <laughs> Absolutely not. We hate that team. Okay. But, yeah, yeah Georgia Southern. Yeah, my bad. Okay. So, Georgia <laughs> Southern. Talk about some of your like, best players, type of offense you guys run. Um, just kind of things just to watch up for uh, this Saturday. Okay. When you're going up against Georgia Southern, Coach Clay Helton has done a fantastic job of turning this team around because prior to that, we had our, our former coach, Coach Chad Lunsford, and that team ran a, a pretty much option-based uh, offense. We ran the ball a lot, and a lot of people know Georgia Southern for the triple option. That's one thing that we pride ourselves on. It's one of the reasons why we won six national championships in the one double A. Nevertheless, with Coach Clay Helton, what we've done is Changed it all the way around. We run an air raid pro style offense, and you're going to see a lot of passing. You're going to see a lot of movement of the ball, short, intermediate, the deep passes. Uh, as far as our players, uh, to be honest, at one point it started with the running game. But like I said, we was a run first team. Now it's more of a passing team, and we got our quarterback, J.C. French. He's been sitting in the wanings for a year, a couple of years, and he's been pretty, you know, he's been pretty good so far. So it's going all starts with the quarterback, and we have like maybe three or four wide receivers that could easily play in a um, power five, power four team. I mean, these guys are absolutely amazing. You know, you have a Derwin Burgess, number two, Dalen Cobb, number one, uh, Marcus Sanders, number five. And we also have um, our tight end, who is a transfer from Auburn, which is Tyler Fromm. If you don't know anything about Tyler Fromm, he's the brother of Jake Fromm, former quarterback of the Georgia Bulldogs. So we, we have a pretty good offense as far as it being, you know, a, a spread around, pass the ball. But you can't overlook our running backs because, like I said, just like the receivers, we have two running backs that can easily be on a power four, power five team. Jalen White, number 25, uh, O.J. Arnold, number 22. And one thing that makes it really uh, interesting about this team is that even though that we're in the Sun Belt, we have a lot of weapons on offense that can move the ball very well. So that's one thing that, you know, even with, like, say, when we play Boise State, we end up putting up 40, 40, 45, 46 points on it. Yeah, I think it was 45. Yeah, you know, and, and, and even when we went back did a, a year or so ago when we played Nebraska, we beat them, put 45 on them. We played Ball State, put 45 on them. Last year, I think we averaged 30-plus a game. So we're, we're, we're more than capable of moving the ball around on offense. So even though I know – which we'll get into your team in a little bit. It's going to be a tough task going up against the Ole Miss because you guys have been lights out so far. Um, even on the defense of defensive side of the ball, Marcus Watson, Trent, middle linebacker, another guy who I think mm -hmm. right now he leads the league and leads the team in tackles. Isaac Walker leads the league and I mean, leads the team in sacks. I want to say he does, but I know he he's really good. Tracy Hill picked six last game. 
Uh, Chase Gamble, he uh, recovered a fumble last uh, against Nevada. Marquise Watson Trent, I just talked about, he forced a fumble. So, uh, and also in the middle, we have a, a, a couple of guys that are like six foot, six one, 340 plus pounds in Latrell Bullard. That's one guy. And then we have a couple other guys of that same size. So we have a lot of weapons on the team, which uh, you would think that a team that's in a, the group of five would be like just another middle of the road group of five team. But we have a lot of weapons that easily could be on any of these, you know, the SEC, ACC, Big Ten teams because we just have the talent. And that just goes back to Coach Clay Helton as far as his recruiting, mostly in the South, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Florida area, where there's a lot of talent. So that's basically what we bring to the table whenever you're facing us. Yeah. And now I'll also mention this right quick. Now, for those who don't know, yes, Coach uh, Clay Helton is the coach at Georgia Southern. Uh, actually, he used to be at USC with uh, Lane Kiffin many years ago. That's something many fans or many people may not know about. But these two coaches do know each other. And uh, actually, uh, I also mentioned this as well, too. Now, of course, Jackson Dart uh, at a high school, he actually went to USC at a high school, but then transferred to Ole Miss. Not surprising. Don't know, yeah, for those who don't know, Jackson Dart was going to go play for Coach Helton at USC. That okay. Was the original plan. Mm hmm. Okay. But yeah, I mean, you got to think about it. Like with that time, for the Ole Miss. Yeah, like you think about it with that 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 connection between Kiffin and Helton. You know, Helton was a quarterback coach because it, it makes sense either or. So, um, so I, I'm not necessarily surprised. It's, it's just another thing with Coach Clay Helton. He has that eye for talent. So when you do pick up a Jackson Dart, when you do have somebody like J T. Daniels, which was there, you know, when you have like a Drake London, which you know the court the receiver that plays for the, the Falcons right now. Juju Smith Schuster. So it's like he's bringing that level of recruitment and, you know, the, the eye for talent to Georgia Southern is one of the reasons why the last few years we've been one of the top teams recruiting out of the Sun Belt because he brings, you know, that eye for talent and that type of uh, the level of talent to the school as well. This is like I said, you know, these guys that are playing now could easily would have been on a group of five, group of four team. Yeah, yeah, he has done a excellent job recruiting for y'all the last couple of years, just from what I've seen. But, um, but of course, he did the same thing at USC as well too. Great recruiter out there, of course, great recruiter Georgia Southern as well too. But yeah, y'all got y'all got some guys who are very talented and could definitely play at a high, higher level for sure. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's one thing. Uh, the first game of the season, I was trying to tell. You know, the guys at Boise uh, State, they were saying, like, okay, it's going to be like a 70 to 14. It's like, nah, like, these guys can hang. And I think, like, once we start talking about, you know, your your team and your side of the ball or whatever, I think that's the only thing that's a little bit different is, like, the talent level is, and, and, and I'm going to, you know, be fairly candid, the talent level is, you know, below what an SEC team brings to the table. And I've seen what you guys are doing. I mean, you're, you're putting up numbers like crazy against the, the opponents. I think for us, the only thing that we need to do is just play clean football just to, you know, keep it competitive, keep it close, kind of similar to what we did against Boise State, and we can make it a game. As long as we don't, you know, cause, you know, make turnovers or give you guys any opportunities, you know, with what we have, I think our talent level can hang with anybody in the SEC, not just with Ole Miss. It's just that we just need to know that playing a night game, I think it's a night game, correct? Yeah. Playing a night game. like central. Right, and you playing it, you know, in a, an environment like that, the last thing you would want it to be similar to what it was when we went to LSU back in 2019. But you know, once again, I mean, who's going to beat Joe Burrow? You know, I mean, who's going to who's going to compete with that at that at, on, during that time? I mean, Joe Burrow and LSU just ran through everybody, so you just don't want it to be anything like that. But you know, that's the task that we face when we go play under the lights like that. Yeah, and we, we talked about this before we started the episode, but yeah, this is a this is a Georgia Southern team who has beat some pretty good teams in the past. Of course, we mentioned you know, I know y'all beat Florida like was it ten years ago, twelve years yeah, ago. Yeah, 2013, we beat them. Okay. And, and and a fun fact about that, we beat that team without completing one pass. Wow, yeah, that is that is very no good. pass completions, and we beat them. Wow, yeah, I, I did not know that. But, yeah, y'all yeah. beat Florida. Y'all beat uh, yeah, Nebraska a couple years ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah, even back in 2016. Now, for those who don't remember, Ole Miss played Georgia Southern back in 2016, and we only won that game by 10 points. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They have some pretty good fight, too. So this, yeah. is, this is a team who is going to probably surprise some Ole Miss fans Saturday for sure, in my opinion. 
Yeah, I, I think that's another thing a lot of people don't look at because, I mean, once again, like we was talking about beforehand, outside of that perimeter or that north part of Georgia where you go into the Atlanta area, you hear about the Georgia Bulldogs, you hear about the, the Georgia Techs, you hear about Georgia State, even though we don't care for that team, to be honest. But with them being in the Atlanta area, I mean, literally the campus is, is in downtown Atlanta, so they get the news media and the coverage. You know, even Kennesaw State, which is, you know, a little bit north of Atlanta, they get more coverage than us because we're down here in South Georgia. But best believe, you know, people overlook us. And like you said, the Nebraskas looked over us. Even Minnesota, we went up to, to, went up to Minnesota, lost that game 32 to 35. You know, um, even when we went to um, play against Nevada just recently, you know, Nevada, you know, they, they underestimated us to an extent, ended up winning that game by three in Nevada. You know, like I said, playing Old Miss, we, we had a, another win against Florida. You know, so it, it it's a lot of, you know, talent here. And, and it just goes back to where we play football. I mean, Georgia Southern plays football, blue collar. We're really tough. We don't have, really try to finesse anybody when it comes to any um, type of ways to get yards on the ground. We find a way to really try to punch you in the mouth. You know, I mean, that's just how Georgia Southern has been since the 80s. You know, we're blue collar, hardworking type of football players down here. And we find a way to win you know, just by, you know, showing that we're not going to try to, you know, you know, get over on you and try to blindside you with anything. We're coming at you every single time. So, and I think that's what the tradition and the pride of this team or this or this organization or this program is all about. Yeah. Um, I was going to kind of get your thoughts on this for a minute as well, too. I don't know how much research you've done on this Ole Miss team. I'm, I'm assuming you've probably done some, but. We've done a little, yeah. Okay, so the strength of our defense the last couple of weeks has been the defensive line. That's obvious. Now, yeah, our, right. our starting four, they're all going to be NFL players one day. Some of these right. guys will be high draft hits here in a couple of years for sure. But even the backups are guys who have NFL potential in the future as well, too. But right now, this rushing, well, this yeah, Ole Miss defensive line, we are first in the country in Russian defense. Oh, my God. Only, only giving up 33 point. Oh three yards a game rushing, which is impressive. That's very hard to do. Yeah, and, and that's another thing. And I'm going to let you go for a second, but another thing that's one thing that's a concern for us, that we love to run the ball. But yeah. I think this year, our, our offensive line, which I don't think the offensive line is bad. I think we have a more of a pass-blocking offensive line compared to years or decades past when we were just a run-blocking monster. I mean, we average almost 300 yards on the ground for the like forever. But this year is a little bit different. So that could be a little bit of issue. Yeah, but I, I don't tell you, just, just being honest, I mean, if I was Georgia Southern, I would attack our passing defense. Now, our passing defense has struggled the last two weeks. There have been some couple series, a little swappy, gave up a couple big plays. Um, even this past weekend, we only gave up six points to wait for us. But honestly, if you kind of think about it, I think we should have gave up probably 13 or 14 points. Uh -huh. Maybe Maybe more, to be honest with you, but – the Ole Miss Russian defense has been pretty good the last couple of weeks, but yeah, the passing defense has a couple of question marks, kind of a couple of concerns. Of course, me as an Ole Miss fan, I'm hoping we can, you know, improve the passing defense before we play Georgia or before we play LSU or some of these bigger teams. Bigger but teams, right. I, I do believe Georgia Southern will probably come out and pass the ball and attack our passing defense this Saturday. Yeah, I think that, like I said, that's one of the bread and butters of this team ever since Coach Clay Helton came in. He wanted to get a quarterback that could acclimate the, the the playbook, could throw the ball, and make every single throw. And for the last couple of years, we've been a little okay with that because we had Cal Van Trees, which did a pretty good job, you know, playing for us, came from transfer from Buffalo. Then we had Davis Brin come in, transfer from Tulsa. But J.C. French, the quarterback I was talking about, he was from Memphis, and he transferred back from Georgia, because, I mean, he's from Georgia, and he's been everything that we've been wanting ever since Clay Helton came in. I mean, he can make all the throws. He's, a, I mean, he can move in, in and out of the pocket. And when it comes to the pass defense, I expect Coach Clay Helton to try to exploit that because, like I said, I talked about Dalen Cobb. I talked about Durham Burgess. I talked about Marcus Sanders. But we have, like, three other receivers that are just as good. And we're going to we're gonna spread the ball around or try to spread the ball around and throw all over the field. I mean, that's just the air raid pro style offense that they're running now. And if that's going to be a thing that's, that could be, you know, some type of weakness against old miss, you best believe that they're going to try to, you know, go after it. Cause 
I mean, even when like the last few years, uh, Cal Van Trees, I think he set records at Georgia Southern throwing for almost 600 yards against James Madison. When, when we played it, uh, other teams, we've been averaging anywhere between 350 to 450 a game. Uh, even J.C. French now, he's like second in the Sun Belt in passing. I think he's averaging over 350, you know, 370 yards. Don't quote me on that. I had it up here. I can't remember. But he's like somewhere up there where he's averaging over 300 yards a game passing. So, yeah, we're definitely going to try to go after that. And that's just, just the bread and butter of Georgia Southern this year. Okay, well, let's, let's kind of change the direction here. So I kind of want your thoughts more about the uh, Georgia Southern defense. Okay. The defense, they run a 4-2-5, multiple oh. defense. So, I mean, you're going to have two linebackers, five – uh, going to have five uh, DBs, four down linemen. And the front four, you have, you know, two two guys that's over 340. You have Isaac Walker, the defensive end. Deadman's another defensive end. These guys can get to the quarterback if you, you know, if you – uh don't watch their speed. They're speed rushers. And up front, you got the big bull rushers with the guys, like I said, over 340, 350 pounds. The, 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 um, the linebackers, when you talk about the linebackers, it all starts with Marquise Watson Trent, uh, like a kid that easily could have been playing, you know, for a, a power five, power, I think it's power four now, power four school easily. But um, managed to stay, wanted to stay with Georgia Southern because we don't have many transfers. But, um, had him playing, so he plays very well in uh, yeah. our secondary. Our secondary, Tracy Hill, had a pick six last game, 6'3", 200 pounds, big big cornerback. You have two safeties that are really good. I think one of our safeties are, are down. Uh, he may play in Tyrell um, Davis, very good guy, um, safety, strong safety. He was out for the last game, but very good. Uh, our other safety, um, Oh goodness, what's his name? Smith. I can't remember his first name. Just that quick. It just, it just, it just, it just went away from me. But Smith is a transfer from K State. Came down to play for Georgia Southern and was phenomenal for um for our team. Led the league. Uh, I don't know if he led the league or I know he led the team in interceptions last season. And he had a uh, a couple of pass breakups this past game. And Cam Williams, another safety that we had that's from the University of Washington, transferred down and played for us as well. So the defense itself is is has been not – it wasn't that good against Boise State because, you know, you got Genty back there. I mean, he's the best running back in the country possibly. Ran for all, the, all those yards. We tightened up every single game since then. I mean, we only allowed 17 points against Nevada, allowed 14 points against uh, – uh, South Carolina State, and not just the points, it's just the way that we handle business by actually tackling, getting the teams off the field, three and outs, making sure they don't score, and being opportunistic when we uh, got the turnovers when they came our way. So the defense is fairly solid. Um, I, I would think that, if anything, it would be a problem, um, which some people still think we still have a tackling issue, and I, I, I would I would kind of say that it is, but for the past couple of weeks, I mean, we've been doing phenomenal. So uh, I think it's a very balanced defense overall. You know, not okay. bad yeah, I, I appreciate your thoughts on that. But, yeah, go on, I want to mention this. Going back to that linebacker, uh, you know, Wilson Trent, he weighs the team with the 20 – yeah, I think it's 28 tackles right now. And he actually – well, the, the, the guy in second actually has 16 tackles. He is yeah. 12 – yeah, 12 plus tackles to everybody else. This dude is a guy Ole Miss has got to watch out for this Saturday. This is the guy who's averaging yeah. nine and ten tackles a game. Right, right, exactly. In in the secondary, like I, I want to go back and I pulled it up now. T.J. Smith is now. I know he's probably going to rip me for that because I think he followed me on X and he's probably going to get he forgot my name. That's T.J. Smith, secondary uh, guy in the secondary, plays strong safety. Um, transfer from K State. It's been everything that we've been asking for since he left K State. So um, yeah, we, we, like with Marquise Watson, Trent, man. Um, he came through the ranks at Georgia Southern. I remember when he came in as a freshman and he he was uh playing against other guys that were that were there that was playing that same position and he always just wanted a chance to play. And every time he went in, he made, you know, a play or two, even as a young guy, sophomore freshman. And once it was his turn, uh, you you kind of saw it in his junior year last year. And when you saw him play, you you saw what he was able to do. I mean, he shut down the game against Georgia State. Every time some, we needed a play from somebody, he was there to tr at least in the vicinity to make it. He's always around the ball. And um, he's been doing a phenomenal job as being a leader this year. 
on the defensive side of the ball because, you know, when, when you talk about players like that could have easily transferred and went to a Power 5 school, probably got more name recognition, he decided to stay where he started at, and it, it's, it's just been paying dividends for him. Yeah. Um, as long as you just one more question about this defense as well, too, I think you kind of touched about this for a minute, but I saw y'all have had a couple different uh, safeties the last couple of weeks. I think y'all had yes. a couple, couple injuries. Yes. Cor- correct me if this is wrong, but I believe y'all have had a different free safety start every game. Yes. So far this year. Last three but, games. Okay. Just kind of what's the plan on that Saturday? Do you think some of the um, if, if Tyrell are back or? Yeah. If Tyrell Davis is healthy, if he's healthy, he's going to play. He's the starter. Okay. Him. And but the other free safety, Cam Williams, is the guy that has basically been rotating out. I mean, Tyro Davis in the Boise State game, he had a turnover, he had an interception in that game, and he played pretty well in um, the Nevada game. But in the middle of that game, he got hurt. I don't know the extent of the injury, but they did sit him out for the, the South Carolina State game. During that time, Cam Williams came in. Now, Cam Williams is a sixth year, I think he could be even a seventh year player out of Washington. So he knows the scheme, the four two five defense very well. And he was one of those um, defensive backs that, that was churning out of Washington during that time when they were like coming up, going guys going into the NFL. I think he felt like he wasn't going to get much playing time in Washington. And, you know, this was a time when, you know, the year right before Michael Penix and them went to the national title. So he decided to transfer out and come down to Georgia Southern. And at the same time, I think it was the defensive back coach of Washington was our defensive coordinator one year down here. So that made him made it easier for him to transfer down. That same guy, the defensive coordinator that was at Georgia Southern, he's now uh, on the LA Chargers staff with Jim Harbaugh. Okay. So he he went back wet, back to the West Coast after being in Washington, which I kind of don't blame him. You so used to being over there and you down here, you know, in near uh, South Georgia. A little bit of homesick, but Cam Williams did decide to stay. And that, and it just goes back to what I was saying about you know, players who do come to Georgia Southern, one thing you don't hear much about is that many players going into the transfer portal and leaving, even though you have all this talent, like I said earlier, that could possibly, you know, be on a Power 4 team. They love what they have down here in Statesboro, you know, the tradition, the atmosphere, you know, playing at Paulson Stadium, which is one of the best, if not one of the greatest group of five stadiums in all of football, if not in all of football in general. You know, a lot of tradition here. Uh, you know, people want to, players want to play here. And once they get here, you you rarely hear about them transferring out. And that's just, you know, you got a kid from, you know, the West Coast come down here and want to stay. You know, a lot of kids do get homesick, like a TJ Smith or a JC French, or these guys want to come back to Georgia. And some of them could have picked playing at Georgia, you know, uh, for the Bulldogs or for uh, or um, Tech. But they decided to come to Georgia Southern. and. You know, we've got a lot of guys who could play on big name colleges decide to be here. And that's why we're, you know, one of the teams that not going to say not necessarily look out for. But if you're not on your A game, we will hang with you and, pro- and possibly beat you if you're not ready. OK, yeah, I got you. Um, I'll tell you what, I know we kind of covered the Georgia Southern offense and defense pretty good for the most part. Uh, I guess we'll just kind of move on to the final part here. So just kind of what's your overall thoughts, overall opinions, uh, score prediction for Saturday as well, too. Uh, I will say this. One thing that, you know, not, not many people really talk about is the special teams. You got a guy like DeAndre Buchanan who can return kickoffs and punts. I mean, he may not do many punts, but I know the kickoffs, he will be doing kickoffs. So that's one person you may want to watch out for on the special team side. Also, we have a pretty good punter as well. So um, outside of all three phases, it's not your team that you hear about a lot, but it is a team that, you know, that plays fairly well against anybody. Um, long as, you know, you just play, you know, not too reckless, have a smart quarterback like we have with J.C. French. Should be pretty good. As far as score predictions, to be quite honest, I've been watching what you guys have been doing. I mean, you've been putting up 50, 60, 70 points against teams. <laughs> I mean, for yeah. us, it, it, the main thing with us, if we can just play – Similar to what we did against Boise State, because that, I mean, that game got out of hand early, but we managed to get back in it just by playing disciplined football, not turning the ball over, not giving the opposition any opportunities to rack up points quick by giving away the ball. No turnovers, um, long sustained drives, and actually getting points at the end of the drive. If we can do that, I honestly feel like this could be a, another shootout. But best case scenario, in my opinion, to be quite honest, I think you guys are probably maybe double up on us 
48-21, 42-28 type of deal. Um, that's just based on what I've seen both teams do. And it's not necessarily an indictment on our team. It's just I know that there's levels to this. And I understand that being a top five team in the SEC playing at night, that's going to be a very tough task for Georgia Southern. When I looked at this game, I I really just wanted to look respectable on the field. I don't want to be one of these teams that go in and just, you know, end up losing by like 50 and then we look like a team. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's like at the end of the day, you want to like say, okay, they may beat us by 21, but it it was a it was because we played our game, but just the other team is better, and it, and it happens that way. It, it just happens. So I'm, yeah. I'm looking at a, I'm looking at a 48 21, maybe 56 28, something like that. But um, that doesn't mean that I don't think we can win because you know a couple of breaks here and there, anything can happen. So it, it is what it is. Okay, I'll just kind of share my thoughts right quick as well too. So we haven't really touched much about it in this video but yeah this Ole Miss offense and Jansen Dart has been incredible the last couple of weeks now yes yes um, it, it don't matter what stat you look up I mean Jansen Dart he's first in the country in passing yards uh we we're also first in the country in first downs uh first in passing offense I think we're like second in the country in points per game yeah he's also like second in the country in uh complete percentage I mean basically when you look up most of the the bid time categories or like the main ones, everybody else, what's up. Most of them, Jackson Dart is either first or second in them. A couple of them, he may be fourth or fifth, but this is the guy who's been special for Ole Miss the last couple of weeks. Of course, Ole Miss has uh, a good running back, some good receivers. I mean, we have some weapons just all over the field. Yeah. Y'all, uh, y'all look, y'all looking phenomenal, man. Yeah, I this, can't take that from you. But yeah, this, this is the Ole Miss offense. I think, I think, I think most Ole Miss fans are kind of thinking we could score probably around 50 or so this weekend. Yeah. Uh, I think 60. I mean, some some may say 60, but I'm kind of thinking maybe 50 or so, maybe 150 is what I'm kind of thinking. Uh, but yeah, going back to the defense, yeah, our defensive line is, is pretty good. I mean, this rushing defense is first in the country, only giving up 33.3 rushing yards a game. But That's yeah, amazing. Well, yeah, but like we mentioned earlier, yeah, the passing defense has been kind of a somewhat of a problem the last two weekends against Middle of Tennessee State. They struggled uh, mm-hmm. this past weekend. We struggled. Uh, actually, our passing defense is 82nd in the country. Oh wow, I didn't know it was that low. But which yeah. is not not good at all. That's not where you want to be. Uh, right. uh, so far, this passing defense is giving up uh, two yeah 220. Uh, 0.3 yards per game in the passing offense. That's not even including the rushing, but right. 80, 80 second passing defense in the country is not where you want to be at no. week three when you haven't played nobody. But right. um, that, that, that's what I said. I think that's where Georgia Southern is going to try to attack because we, we throw the ball around a lot and we have the receivers to do it. And that's why I think that even though I feel like you guys have put up that those kind of numbers, uh, as far as the points, I think we'll still be able to get maybe three, maybe four touchdowns in the game. I, I believe with the with the passing game we have. Yeah, but uh, yeah, against uh, against Furman we gave up no points. Against Middle Tennessee State we gave up three. Uh, but then this past weekend we gave up six to Wake Forest. I mean, once again, honestly, they Wake Forest. I mean, we caught a couple breaks. I'll just be honest with you on camera. They should have scored another seven, ten points, maybe more than that. But right. Um, but I, I will say this. I know some Ole Miss fans may not agree with me here. I do believe this is the best offense we have faced all year. And that may be a surprise. That may be a statement many fans were probably not expecting me to say, but I do believe this Georgia Southern offense or probably score, in my opinion, I kind of think it may be 14 or so, okay. maybe, maybe 20 mats in my opinion. But okay. I, I think yeah. – Georgia Southern will score some this weekend. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking maybe around the 50 to 20 range, kind of in that area somewhere. That's what I'm kind of. Yeah, I, I think that's the. I, I think that's that's fair. Because like I said, I mean, you're playing not just you're playing against a really great team. It's like when you're playing as well. I mean, playing at night in a hostile environment, that's tough. I mean, that is. I mean, like I said, it just goes back to look at 2019 when we played LSU under the lights. I mean, we yeah. didn't even have we didn't even have the type of offense that we have now. We were a run first option style offense, and you know, and, and and to be honest, I mean, you're playing against Joe Burrow at LSU. I mean, nobody's beating that team. No, I, I don't care. Nobody was beating that team in 2019. But uh, nevertheless, like like I said, with 
you saying that we're probably playing the best offense that you you faced this year. I agree. You know, based on the other team, no disrespect to the other ones, but like I said, I I think our talent level. We go to Wake Forest. I think we'll beat Wake Forest. You know, I, we we play uh, East Tennessee. We'll beat them. Furman Furman has been our stepchild even back in the one double A days. And I'm gonna be honest. I mean, we've been beating up on Furman since we you know when we before we came to the FBS. So that's nothing new. I mean, they're they're happy that we're not playing them anymore in the in the SoCon. They don't want to play us no more. But with that being said, yeah, and and I think it's a fair assessment. You said you know fifty to fourteen. I'm I'm thinking more of the 48, you know, 28, maybe 48, 21. And I think it's fair because of the situation. If it's a day game, maybe I think it's even more. And like you said, some of your fans may not, but you know, agree with it. And that's fine. A lot of Boise State fans didn't believe it either. I mean, I said it on my podcast. I said that we're going to score seven to eight on seven, eight drives. They didn't believe me. I mean, we scored 45 points. That's six touchdowns and a field goal. That's seven drives. And they came back like, oh, I see what you were saying. I'm like, yeah, like this team can put up points. It's just the main thing is if you're playing against anybody and you know it's going to be a shootout, the last thing you want to do is turn the ball over. If we turn the ball over, all bets are off. Other than that, I think we can hang with almost anybody offensively. Now, defensively, I think we got some good players. But then again, like I said, there's levels to what we have. You know, there's talent in the SEC, talent in the Big Ten, talent in the ACC. And, you know, step down and you got talent in the Sun Belt, which a lot of those players could be playing at that level on those teams. You know, there's a lot of group of five teams that got a lot of power five players. It's just that they don't they don't get the playing time or, you know, the coaches thought otherwise of, you know, not keeping them on, you know, in Ohio State or not keeping them on the Northwestern or, you know, they just decide like, okay, I can't get playing time. I'm just going to go play, you know. In a group of five team, and you know they get the playing time. So, it, it it it's we have talent, but I know there's levels to it, and that's why I say you guys will probably double up on us, probably put up you know anywhere between forty five to fifty five points. And if we play our game, and if we don't get the opportunities to to steal a couple of turnovers, I think at the most we'll probably put up maybe anywhere between twenty one twenty eight points. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Uh, yeah, Kenny, I think that is going to be it for today's video. Uh, once again, I, I appreciate you coming on. Definitely means a lot for sure. Uh, I will make sure to post your link. Uh, well, you, YouTube channel link in the comments. And also, yes. I'll, I'll, give you, uh, I'll give you a link to your page on X, too. So yes. I'll, I'll be doing the same thing because, I mean, you know, us guys, you know, making this content. I mean, we, we I think we do the best job out of any, you know, analyst that's on the national stage. I think we do a great job. So I absolutely, I'll be linking your stuff and I'll be following you and, and subscribe to the channel and following the Ole Miss. I really want y'all to beat those Bulldogs. Oh, my God. I hope that I'll beat the Bulldogs. Oh, you're talking about George? <laughs> yes, please beat them. Okay. Please beat them. <laughs> please beat them. Yeah, please beat them. Will, so. yes. um, I mean, they look, they look kind of suspect against Kentucky, so. I mean, hey. Hey, they look a little suspect against Kentucky, so. Yeah, they did for sure. But, um, but yeah, that is going to be it for today's video. And, of course, if y'all could also just leave a like, uh, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. would also mean a lot as well, too. Um, see you guys in this video. Have a good one. And, of course, hotty toddy.